Welcome to my quick guide on generating 3D models of terrain from topographic maps in Rhino. Since we're going to be working at scale for this project, I suggest opening a large object Rhino file using meters as your units. As always, save early and save often. Next, we're going to need a topographic map. I'm going to be using an open street map of Stratton Lake in Algonquin Park. Screenshot your map, taking care to include the scale bar on the bottom left-hand side. Screenshot more than what you're planning to use. Alt-Tab to Rhino, and paste your screenshot into top view. Don't worry about the scale, we'll be handling that momentarily. Go into your layers, or rename one layer as Base Image. Select your image, go into top view, and now zoom all the way in on your scale bar. You're going to draw a line from the left-hand side of the scale bar to the right-hand side, holding down Shift to ensure a perfectly parallel line. We're going to go into the command line, and we're going to type in Scale 2D. We're going to use endpoint snaps to select the left-hand side of the line and the right-hand side of the line. Rhino is going to be asking you for a second reference point, which in our case is going to be the scale written on the scale bar. 100 meters. Select just our line, so cell line, and delete it. We no longer need it. Next, we're going to lock our base image layer, and we're going to begin to draw our contours by calling uh, this layer flat curves. And from there, we're going to draw our curves. Type in curve into command and simply follow along with the topographic curve as close as possible. Don't worry if it's not perfect. Topographic lines aren't exactly one-to-one -to, -one to what's in the world, so if you make a small mistake, that's no big deal. And if you make a large mistake with the curve tool, like this, you can simply Control z those away. Once you're done, hit Enter, and now you have an approximation of that topographic line. Continue to do so for the rest of the map. The lake is one large topographic line and will represent the lowest point in our 3D model. Some curves which cross the lake are simply going to be approximated to hug very closely to the line defining the lake. That way, when we turn this into a 3D model, that will simply be a very steep slope. Now, I've already done this over here. As you can see, we have all of our curves, and I've put all of them into this layer called Topo Curves. Now, we're going to create a new layer called Raised Curves. Next, type in Cell Curves, which is going to select all 20 of the curves that we've drawn, and we're going to go into our layers and simply copy all of those over. We're going to hide the flattened topo curves, and now we're going to start turning this into three-dimensional geometry. The way to do this is to select all of your curves, make sure that that base image is locked, turn on your gumball, which in my case it's already on, but type in gumball and type in O, then determine what the increment is of your contour lines. In this case, we're going from 240 to 250, which means that this is a 10 meter increment. Deselect the lowest point, which, as you know, is the lake. Everything else is going to go up by 10 meters. So I'm going to select the Z control on the gumball, and I'm going to type in 10 meters. And everything rises by 10 meters. And I'm going to keep doing this with every successive topographic line. And as you can see, this is beginning to produce a topography. I'm going to skip ahead to having done all of them. Now that we have all of these curves at their appropriate heights, you can start to see how this resembles three-dimensional geometry. We're going to go into top view, we're going to turn that base image back on, which is still locked, and we're just going to select the part of this image that we want to use. Draw a rectangle over here. I'm going to move it into place with the gumball. So that's approximately what I want to represent. Use the trim command with the rectangle selected to cut down any curves which cross the rectangle so that the only thing left is what's actually inside here. 
And by selecting all of those, you can see that they all end right at the border with the rectangle. Anything that doesn't cross the rectangle is to be deleted separately. Like so. Now I'm going to place the rectangle in its own layer, and I'm simply going to call that the boundary. Once again, right-clicking, change object to layer, and lock it. Now I'm going to hide the base image, as we're not going to be using it. I'm going to open my notes, which is a panel up here. I'm going to type in distance into command prompt and just measure the distance of my boundary. 816 meters by 804. That's actually pretty close to square. I'm going to select all of these curves, making sure once again that they don't actually cross each other. We're going to type patch. And the reason why we measured that boundary was because this aspect ratio is actually going to determine these spans. What I'm going to do is, since we know this is about 8x8, eight eight, which is basically square, I'm going to leave these as 10x10. 10 10. But if this was, for example, 8x16, I might increase one of these or decrease one of them in order to match that ratio. But for now, when I preview this, you should see that the surface being produced actually follows these curves quite closely. But it spills out all over the place. And we don't really want that. So I'm going to click OK. I'm going to unlock the boundary curve again. I'm going to go into top view, select that boundary rectangle, type in trim, and just trim that surface down. So now the only thing being used is the area that we're looking for. But of course, we're not quite done yet, because this section in the center is the lake, but it's all curved here. And we know that the lake is essentially flat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these topographic lines, which define the lake, and I'm going to invert my selection, lock everything else. Just here, I'm going to draw lines between the different lake defining curves, like that, and one over here, goes to here. Since everything else is locked, I can just do select all, join, and I should see a closed curve up here. Now that I've got that, I can unlock this select that closed curve, go back into top view, and trim away this centerpiece. Now we have the border of the lake defined and, of course, all the topography on either side of the lake. I'm going to patch the inside here, and this is basically fine. We know that this is going to be a flat surface. And now you'll see that there's small gaps. These are essentially going to be cliff sides in our model. Next, using Extrude Surface and selecting these two bankments and extruding them pretty much any distance. And now we're going to check for artifacts. So what we're looking for is something like this. A point where this surface actually dwindles down to basically nothing and becomes one dimensional. And that's going to really mess with our, our ability to turn this into a, a closed object. So what we want to do is we want to explode this surface and delete these sections. And as you can see, this flat piece is essentially one dimensional, but if you split it using this side, you can trim it down and this is now going to be a very, very easy object to work with because we got rid of that one little bit that was sticking out. Now we're going to do the same here. We're going to explode this extrusion. I'm going to select this surface. I'm going to split it using this side. And we're just going to delete what's the leftovers.
rejoin everything, produce a plane in top view, lower it, maybe a bit more than that actually, how about that much? And this is going to determine the thickness of our 3D model. So I select the two surfaces that we've been working with, I split them, and then I'm going to split the plane that we've been using, also using these surfaces, and what we should be left over with is very close to a complete 3D object. If I turn on rendered mode, it's very, very close. See? Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to extrude. I'm going to actually switch this back into solid view. Control Alt S, if you're curious. I'm going to actually extrude the lake downwards, just so that this is all one thickness. I'm going to copy and paste the surface of the lake, bring it down, select everything, join it. And I should see in the command prompt one closed poly surface. Et voila! You now have three dimensional topography. But we'll notice that these aren't quite ready to be 3D objects yet. If we isolate these two top surfaces, you'll note that they have these little bits hanging off of them, which are going to be a problem in creating 3D closed objects. What we're going to do is we'll use the split command and we're going to use the ISO curve variant. So I'm going to type I. And we're going to want the direction control, which in this case is set to V, to be creating as small a cut as possible. So in this case, V is perfect. I'm going to bring that right in as close as we can. And now that we've put that line down, I'm going to hit enter. And we split that surface across its V dimension. We're going to have to patch that momentarily. We'll do the same thing over here first. Split, ISO curve. See, V is now going to cut way too much of this surface off, so I'm actually going to change the direction by typing U. And now we're just trimming a tiny bit off the end. We'll delete that, and we'll show. We're almost there, but this corner is still open. So I'm going to isolate this skirt and the top surface. I'm going to duplicate my edge here and here and what we're going to do is going to grab this curve I'm going to put a point at the corner here I'm going to split the curve using the point cell PT now that should be two small curves I'm going to do the same thing here I'm going to put a point down I'm going to split the curve using the point cell point there we go I'm going to grab those. Now I'm going to type in patch. I'm just going to create a small patch here. I'm going to join this to my top surface. And I'm going to join my top surface to the, the extrusion. I'm going to show everything else and join that to the bottom piece. And if you've done everything successfully, you should see this message that it's been joined into a closed poly surface. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And hopefully we get one closed poly surface. Now I'm going to select these objects and put them in a new layer called 3D Topographic Model. And there you have it. If I hide my raised curves and I hide my boundary, we have a pretty nice representation of this topography. Since this is a set of three closed objects, I can create a box, basically any size, bring it in here, and do a Boolean difference operation to produce a site, which I can then 3D print and use for modeling. Thank you so much for following along.